Hello, a great welcome and a lovely vibrant morning from here in Delhi. Hope each one of you as always are absolutely fine and suddenly you might feel actually so it seems that you are today recording this particular session from your own home. Yes, you are absolutely right. Thanks for Corona Caldron, each one of us are stuck up as you know actually in our what we call homes and that's the reason this particular session we are recording it from the comfort you can say of our our home so now in days 36 is the what we call topic which we are going to actually start up in this particular session and since we are doing in days 36 simultaneously it means we are also doing what we call existing accounting standard as 28 because more or less the guidelines are absolutely same correct so because uh, we don't have the facilities of the studio so you will have to bear a bit with us actually during this times of crisis with respect to the quality aspect but uh, at the same time studies also must go on and that's the reason we have decided to take it what we call from the makeshift arrangement so india's 36 we are going to start if you are ready we on our side are absolutely ready as always i need not want to actually tell you that you have to write a lot because it's a pretty long standard and we are going to actually do lots of case studies correct but before we dwell and before we start this particular session there is a sheet lying here so let me actually explain the intricacies of this particular standard first uh, so that later on it becomes easily comprehensible correct as you know in the as 36 actually it deals with impairment of assets now what exactly is the impairment of assets first of all we need to know that suppose there is an entity you need not require to write this because it's a rough work an entity has reflected let us say an item of property plant and equipment in the balance sheet at rupees 5 lakhs correct and let us say this is the balance sheet as a 31st of 321 correct this particular item is reflected at rupees 5 lakh however on this particular date if I am going to sell this particular item correct let us say I would be able to get uh, 4 lakh rupees correct actually if I am going to sell it today I might have to incur some expenses also correct let us say 50,000 worth of expenses I may have to incur so net sale price will be equal to 3.5 lakhs if I am going to sell it today and we will see later on this particular term 3.50 sale minus exp expenses to sale it is known as as we will see later on it is called as fair value less cost of sale fair value less cost of sales correct if i am going to sell this particular item on this particular date correct then i may actually get what we call 3.5 lakhs it is known as fair value less cost of sale or fair value less cost of disposal at the same time let us say I may be able to use this particular asset for next five years let us say remaining life of this particular asset is five years and during these five years this particular asset let me see let me say or let me assume actually may give us a return of rupees four lakh fifty thousand balance sheet date is 31st 321 and still some life is remaining let us say five years life of this particular asset is still remaining and during the remaining life this particular asset may fetch us a return of four lakh fifty thousand now this value of four lakh fifty thousand is known as value in use it is known as value in use this particular standard deals with impairment loss and so far I haven't told you what exactly the impairment loss is I will let you know but the important point is that before I let you know what exactly the impairment loss is now the value is 5 lakh in the balance sheet if I am going to sell it today the net selling price would be 3.5 lakh better known as fair value less cost of sale and if I may keep on using this particular asset till the end of its life and the remaining life happens to be let us say 5 more years and during five more years this particular asset combinedly actually could deliver a return of four lakh fifty thousand better known as value in use now if i am going to toss up a question 
after having a look over these figures of 5 lakh, 3.5 lakh and 4 lakh, 50,000, do you think actually it is feasible or it is a better what we call policy to reflect this item at 5 lakh? Wouldn't it what we could deliver wrong messages to the users or the financials? Suppose if this particular item is reflected in the balance sheet at 5 lakh, but actually we may say that if we are going to sell it today, it is not going to deliver us more than 3.5 lakh, while it's what we call remaining value of use is just about 4 lakh 50. So it is definitely not in the spirit of what we call true and spirit as we call it, not in the spirit of what we call fairism that we should reflect it at 5 lakh. That is exactly the what we call crux and the theme behind this particular standard. Is this particular standard as we will see, ask the entities actually to what we call keep on testing your assets for impairment losses because you might have you might be reflecting the item at a particular value but the actual value might be different so how to compute the impairment loss in order to compute the impairment loss see here we need to compute the carrying amount and carrying amount is 5 lakh and we have to compare it with the recoverable amount so recoverable amount i will let you know later on it is the rough work don't worry about that now the main point is that first of all we need to know what is recoverable amount. Recoverable amount we will see is higher of fair value less cost of sales and value in use. I told you 3.5 lakh is the fair value less cost to sale and value in use is 4.5 lakh. I will consider the higher value between these two. The higher value happens to be 4.5 lakhs. That is how the recoverable amount is computed. So recoverable amount happens to be what we call higher figure between the fair value less cost of sale and value in use. Then this recoverable amount will be compared with the carrying amount. And if the carrying amount would exceed the recoverable amount, we may say there is an impairment loss to the tune of the difference between these two items. Now in this case, the impairment loss will be 0 0.50. So logically, I need to reflect this item this is the carrying amount and impairment loss is what we call 4 point uh, impairment loss is 0 0.50 so logically this item should be reflected in the balance sheet at 4 lakh 50 that will deliver a much what we call truer and fairer what we call picture of the organization so that is the what we call story behind this particular standard because we do not want to put up a very exaggerated show in the eyes of the users of the financial otherwise they may drive as quite easy to conclude that wrong conclusions so that's the reason this standard stresses upon the enterprises that they should actually keep on what we call reviewing the carrying amounts and keep on testing them. There might be some impairment loss and if there is any impairment loss, they need to actually recognize it. This impairment loss will be of course recognized in a statement of PNL. So my entry will be impairment loss account debit to relevant asset account, no doubt about that. So and ultimately impairment loss will be debited to statement of PNL. So this is the bird's view which I presented before you. Now just have a look. I have already written. So you need to actually write each and every word. I am simply actually just moving about what I have written already just to save the time. Correct? India is 36 of course impairment of assets and its corresponding accounting standard is AS28. I have already told you if we are doing what we call India is 36 it automatically means we are also covering what we call existing accounting standard 28. As usual though, what is the objective? I've already told you the objective is to ensure that assets are carried at not more than the recoverable amount. The basic objective is that the entity should not what we call carry their asset at a value which is higher than its recoverable amount, correct? And something I have written here, but that I will explain later on because you wouldn't be able to understand it. However, I'm just reading it. Also, this standard specifies specifies when an entity should reverse impairment loss. We will talk about the reversal of imp impairment loss. One is recognition of impairment loss and of course reversing it. That means this particular standard also specifies guidelines that when you should reverse the impairment loss, how we do that, that is what we call part of discussion, which is which will fall later on. Correct? Now, next point is scope as we normally do. As far as this particular standard is concerned, it is applicable to almost every item. But as usual, there are some exceptions also. This particular standard will not apply in case of what we call impairment of inventory. Impairment is nothing sort of a fall in value, isn't it? 
So inventory, as we know, inventory is covered by what we call India's two. Similarly, contract assets it is covered by India's seven. Similarly, deferred tax asset it is covered by India's twelve. And assets arising from employee benefits, of course, that will fall under India's nineteen. So that is why all these things will not be covered by this particular standard. Similarly, any fall in value or impairment. Uh, with respect to financial assets will not fa fall under as we know actually these are covered by financial instrument india is 107 india is 32 and india is 109 similarly biological assets and then intangible assets arising from insurers contractual rights they fall under india 104 and non-current assets held for sale they fall under what we call india 105 it is just for a cursory reading actually i read it but more importantly, now we come to the important part of this particular standard. One is impairment loss. I just told you, you know the meaning. It is the excess of carrying amount over recoverable amount, isn't it? And what is recoverable amount? I just told you a moment ago that recoverable amount happens to be higher figure of fair value, less cost of sales. And fair value, less cost of sales is also known as fair value, less cost of disposal. Then I take this second sheet. So recoverable amount is higher off when I just told you fair value, less cost of sale and value in use. Now I will give you a better view of what we call these two items, fair value, less cost of sale and value in use. However, I have already told you the crux of these two, correct? So just pay attention here. Recoverable amount is higher off. I have already told you fair value, less cost of sale. Please, this is the short form acronym. It's a pretty long what we call word or sentence almost. Fair value, less cost to sale. So you write full form. And similarly, value in use, VIU. What is fair value, less cost of sale actually? It is the expected sale price, less cost of disposal. Cost of disposal means when today I am going to sell a particular asset, I may have to incur some expenses like legal costs, term duties, transaction taxes, cost of moving the asset, cost of bringing the asset into what we call conditions for sale. So I may have to incur some expenses. If there are any such expenses, I will have to subtract it from the expected sale price. Then only I will get fair value less cost of sale. And value in use, earlier I told you value in use simply logically means the returns which we may derive from this particular asset during its remaining life. Actually, that is not the what we call full truth. Actually, the full truth is that we are going to take the returns, but we will compute their present value as you normally do in your what we call financial management under capital budgeting. Correct? So, present value of estimated cash flow. We will take into account the inflows of from this particular asset during the remaining life phase. And of course, we will compute their present value, sum it up, sum it up that will deliver us what we call a present value. So, present value of estimated cash flows and sale of asset at the end of its useful life. See here, present value of estimated cash flow and what we call sale value at the end as you know when you used to compute under capital budgeting you used to take into account the cash inflows and at the end of the life the asset would definitely deliver us some what we call amount so whatever inflows are there and whatever scrap value we are getting we will what we call compute their present value so logically value in use means the present value of estimated inflows which we are going to derive from this particular asset correct Ultimately, after having acquainted ourselves with these two terms, impairment loss and recoverable amount, recoverable amount is higher off what we call fair value, less cost of sale and value in use, correct? Once you have the recoverable amount, you will compare it with the what we call carrying amount. And if carrying amount will exceed the what we call recoverable amount, then only impairment loss will be there. However, if carrying amount is shorter than impairment law than what we call recoverable amount then you need not require to do anything remember one thing so don't ask any such question carrying amount generally what we mean by carrying amount generally an item when we write in the balance sheet how we write we take into account the cost correct number one whatever accumulated depreciation we have provided we will subtract it and then if there is any impairment loss we will subtract it then only we will get what we call as i said the carrying amount is it clear to you or not this is generally i do in part one correct however after having a look over these two now i come over to the next part of this particular standard now we talk about the recognition and measurement aspect correct recognition and measurement aspects just pay attention recognition and measurement how many points I have already written? Let me check it out. So, one, two, three, and uh, yes, still up to three points, correct? So, this is you can say for fourth point, 
that is recognition and measurement recognition and measurement recognition and measurement what does it mean recognition and measurement that mean ultimately how you are going to recognize the impairment loss recognition and measurement of impairment loss you will be able to understand only with the help of an example but let me first of all actually present the what we call theme of this particular topic just pay attention since you have already done existing standard as 10 or for that instance in as 16 you know that an entity has a prerogative a right whether to adopt cost model or revaluation model if i buy any property plant and equipment then i have the choice i may opt for what we call cost model or i may opt for revaluation model this topic we discussed very well and at length under what we call indias and india 16 now suppose our entity has gone for cost model cost model suppose our entity is following cost model of recognition and measurement of a particular asset and then impairment loss takes place then in that case whatever impairment loss will be there it will be debited to statement of impairment loss will be debited to statement of pnl debited to statement of pnl if we are following what we call cost model so in case of cost model it is quite simple and it is not difficult also suppose also when we will follow revaluation model revaluation model if suppose our entity is following revaluation model revaluation model if our entity is following revaluation model then how we are going to recognize the impairment loss so in this case there may be two situation i am looking for what we call scale scale right at this moment it's not in li not lying in front of me so i will use this way if our entity is not following correct cost model it is following revaluation model as we know revaluation model means suppose under the revaluation model there is some appreciation what entry you would pass or what entry you used to pass the entry because there is an increase so asset account debit to revaluation reserve account but this is a possibility only when we are following revaluation model correct as you know we keep on reviewing our assets also there might be what we call up valuation or devaluation isn't it so if we are following revaluation model in case of up valuation we generally write the entry relevant ppe account debit to asset revaluation reserve account so if we are following revaluation model and revaluation reserve rr revaluation reserve exists if revaluation reserve exists we are following revaluation model and let us say some impairment loss has taken place and revaluation reserve is already existing then what we will do in that case we are not going to debit the impairment loss blindly to the statement of pnl in cost model it, in cost model i told you it's quite simple because whatever what we call impairment loss will take place you can simply and straight away take it to what we call statement of pnl however if revaluation reserve exist correct then if revaluation reserve exist there is a call also if revaluation reserve exists then what happen impairment loss shall be shall be debited impairment loss shall be debited we have to keep an eye over the what we call sheet also because i told you it's a makeshift arrangement correct shall be debited to revaluation reserve 
to the extent to the extent to the extent available and remaining il stands for impairment loss and remaining loss if any shall be debited to statement of pnl just to explain actually i will explain late it later on with the help of a complete comprehensive example but just for the sake of what we call explanation here because otherwise some of the student feel that they are not getting the point let us say revaluation reserve balance existing revaluation reserve existing balance is 1 lakh existing balance is rupees 1 lakh correct The question states that existing balance in revaluation reserve is one lakh. That is clue enough for us to understand that this entity is following revaluation model. And let us say impairment loss has taken place. An impairment loss, let us say, is equal to one lakh fifty thousand. Because entity is following re revaluation method, I cannot debit this impairment loss straight away to the statement of PNL. Correct. So. what i will do now instead of debiting the complete loss of impairment to the what we call a statement of pnl first of all i will see how much is the balance available in the revaluation reserve in the revaluation reserve balance is 1 lakh so out of 1 lakh 50000 1 lakh worth of loss can be adjusted against the revaluation reserve and remaining balance will be taken towards the statement of pnl this is the only difference that mean the rule of what we could recognizing impairment loss is very simple if the entity is following the cost model entire impairment loss will be debited or written off to statement of pnl however if the entity follows as i said what we call revaluation method in that case whatever what we call balance is there in the existing reserve first first of all impairment loss will be adjusted against the same and still if some portion of impairment loss remains then it will be adjusted against statement of pnl so i will write here 50000 out of 150 1 lakh has been debited to revaluation reserve correct to impairment loss that is 1 lakh 50000 however there is also a possibility that entity is following a revaluation method and there is no existing balance if there is no existing balance in revaluation reserve then you have only one alternative then you can then what can you do the only alternative left with you is that entire loss will have to be debited to statement of pnl so revaluation reserve does not exist revaluation reserve does not exist if revaluation reserve does not exist in that case entire impairment loss will be debited to statement of pnl entire impairment loss will be debited will be debited to statement of pnl to statement of pnl is it clear to you or not i hope you are able to get it so i will keep this sheet over here and i will now of course try to make you understand the uh understand this particular point with the help of an example there are lots of sheets lying here okay you will have to pay attention and write one case study along with me the case study is like this k 
this day. Case study one. Write along with me W1 Limited has an asset, has an asset which is carried, which is carried. which is carried let me check whether it is flashing in the screen or not which is carried in the balance sheet which is carried in the balance sheet at balance sheet as at 31st 3 21 at rupees let us say 500 lakhs Five hundred lakhs. You are carrying this item in the balance sheet at five hundred lakhs. Correct. Five hundred lakhs. Now write along with me further. As at that date, as at that date, as at that date, value in use value in use once I will write in full value in use this time it is given to you is rupees 400 lakhs correct is rupees 400 lakhs while its fair value less cost to sale or cost of sale whatever you may like to write is rupees 375 lakhs now what is the question the question is before uh, before that you also write remaining life remaining life is four years remaining life is four years remaining life is four years and residual value and residual value is nil residual value is nil now you are supposed to compute as per the demand of the question you are supposed to compute one impairment loss impairment loss one you, question also asks you to pass entries revised carrying amount revised carrying amount and depreciation this is the demand of the question now we will do the solution we want to compute the impairment loss first of all. In order to compute the impairment loss, we need a carrying amount. And carrying amount is given to you already. How much is the carrying amount? Carrying amount of the asset is 500 lakhs, rupees in lakhs. 
500 it is already given now you will compare it with the recoverable amount you will compare it with recoverable amount and we know that recoverable amount is higher of Recoverable amount is higher of what? 1. Fair value less cost of sale. Fair value less cost of sale is given to you in this particular question. That is four, value in use is 400 and fair value less cost of sale is 375. So 375. You will compare it with value in use. Now value in use given to us is 400 higher among the higher between these two is 400 so recoverable amount is 400 and because recoverable amount falls short of the carrying amount or should i say carrying amount is in excess of what we call recoverable amount so there is impairment loss so there is impairment loss i will use the red pen so impairment loss is equal to 100 question all has asked us to pass entry to pass entry means we need to know actually how this impairment loss will be recognized because nowhere revaluation reserve is given and nowhere it is mentioned that entry entity is following revaluation model. So quite obviously only one alternative or should I say one presumption we can go up with and that is that entity is following cost model. So because we have to go by the cost model so entire impairment loss will have to be debited to statement of PNL. So my next entry will be statement of PL account debit to impairment loss account. Now this hundred worth of impairment loss is debited. Correct? Question has also asked to I will have to actually take the new sheet now to show the revised carrying amount. This is the third demand of the question, isn't it? So we will go by the third demand carrying amount, revised carrying amount. Revised carrying amount. Revised carrying amount is see here. Your carrying amount was 500 as per the balance sheet. Now you will reflect impairment loss of 100 so your revised carrying amount will be 400 question has also stated that remaining life of the asset is four years so when i will compute the depreciation now because question has also asked us to compute the depreciation so depreciation will be 400 divided by 4 remaining life is this much and residual value is zero so we shall charge a depreciation of 100 and then 100 each in each of the following four years this is the demand of the question in this particular session we will finish uh, till up to this point and we'll continue with many more such point in this interesting and long standard